Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Raw Built. I like it, but I just, you know, I wanna understand your childhood from how you said that, you know what I mean? Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Raw Built. I'm your host, Rob. All right, pretty good, man. Okay, yeah. everybody, uh, welcome welcome to the show. Mike from Mike Will Travel. So yes, I am a YouTuber as well, up and coming, and I also do Airbnb tours. So I tour unique spots like tree houses, tiny homes, container homes, you name it. But my background actually started in digital marketing for hospitality. So the past five years or so, I work with boutique hotels, Airbnbs, and vacation rental properties all over the world and now we're here. Today we're gonna be talking about how to market your Airbnb. For me, I really you know, distill the basics, the foundations of marketing your Airbnb to a great listing, great listing copy, awesome photography. So I'm really excited to get his POV on what, the top five yeah, or so tips? I'd say about five solid tips I got today for you guys. Five tips to market your short-term rental. I would say Airbnb, but it's not sponsored by them, so short-term rental. <laughs> We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Breaking news, we have a baby. Everybody, meet my son, Rook. All right, that's it. Just wanted to share some good news. Don't forget to hit that like button. Now back to the video. So what I would like to do is before every tip, Maybe we insert like gratuitous slow-mo shots of us doing cool things. <laughs> yes. Like chopping down a tree. I love it. You have an ax? I do. So one huge missed opportunity I see is that Airbnb owners are just not optimizing the titles of their properties in Airbnb. Probably the biggest mistake I see is, what's the name of this town we're in again? Sevierville. Sevierville. I have never heard of this place before, ever. I'm from New Jersey. And lots of hosts in this area might perhaps say, oh, we're a tiny home in Sayerville, or we're a tiny home 20 minutes from Pigeon Forge, or 20 minutes from here, or 20 minutes from there. Only people who are gonna understand what the heck that means is if you are a local who lives within a 50 mile square radius of down here. If I'm from out of state, from a different region, I'm looking for Airbnbs, that's just completely meaningless to me because I'm not familiar with the geographic location of where that is. So that's just a complete waste of characters in my opinion. So tip number one, snappy headline. I see a lot of people really mail this in and their Airbnb listings, like they'll give me a headline that's like two or three words, but really I want people to understand what they're getting from the experience in about eight to 10 words. You can't make it too long, mm -hmm. but you want it to give you one selling aspect of your property. So if it's a mountain cottage here, you wanna say mountain cottage with views of the Smoky Mountains or mountain cottage with hot tub that sleeps eight. Something 100%. that, you know, something like that that gives you a few descriptors of what that property actually has. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I kind of have also like maybe like one buzzword adjective, something like stunning or unique or charming, something like that. And then kind of building on Rob's point is kind of highlight the one key factor, the key amenity that sets your property apart. Like, is it the hot tub? Is it the views? Is it the fact that it's, you know, great for groups? Something like that. Um, I would really, again, only go the local or the location route if you're near a place that's very recognizable to everybody, say New York City or LA. That's probably the only time I would go local. Keep it eight to 10, buzzword, and then highlight the key amenity part. Yeah, so speaking of like the charming, one of my headlines I believe is charming chalet, 15 minutes away from the Cosby entrance. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming to the Smoky Mountains, you want to you want to know how far you are from the actual entrance. So people that are looking for proximity or location will know if I book this exactly. place, A, it's very charming, but B, it's only gonna take us 15 minutes to actually get to the mountains. Mm -hmm. Is that, did we nail that? No, that was good. Uh, uh, yes. uh, uh, B roll take now. Tip number two, professional photography. I can't tell you how often I see people that actually spend ten to $100,000 on the property, getting it ready for Airbnb, putting in the work, putting mm. in the hours, staging it, spending weekends getting it ready, and then they spend zero dollars on photography because they say, oh, my iPhone 6 can get the job done. <laughs> Speaking of iPhone 6, I'm gonna record this on my iPhone since apparently this is how I vlog now. If you're enjoying all of these different tips, I put them in a fancy little PDF for you to download in the description below. All right, 
back to the video. <laughs> and then they're literally leaving thousands of dollars on the table. So for me, I think probably the number one investment you can make on an Airbnb oh, is yeah. hiring a professional photographer. A hundred percent. And especially like sourcing that content as well. There's a few different ways you can do that. Uh, what I suggest to all my marketing clients is once per quarter, every three months, is bringing in either a photographer or an influencer to get you that content. So there's a few ways to do that. Actually a platform I highly suggest, it's called Stay Omni. And basically through there, they vet all these influencers, these photographers, they make sure they're legit. And you can then list your property there on this platform and you get messages from these people that want to come and shoot your place. And you host them for a night or two in return and you get a bunch of photos then to use on your social media, on your website, on your listing. And I suggest doing this again every quarter. The reason I say every quarter is to kind of show the changing of the seasons. I think that's really important as well, um, depending on your location, because you don't want to have just a bunch of snow pictures when it's July out because that makes no sense and also vice versa no that makes perfect sense actually because out in arizona for example it does get super hot it does get super snowy and then especially here in gatlinburg where as you can see there's a lot of greenery here mm -hmm. but when it's orange it's an entirely different vibe it gives you an entirely different visceral reaction to see all the trees that are orange and you know updating your photography to really match the attitude and the tone that you're going for in your airbnb listing mm -hmm. i think that's really important <laughs> i'm trying to keep my cool but there are so many gnats on my face. Last thing I'm gonna say about photography, I wanna harp on this, just please pay the money to do it. I promise you, yes, a yes. good photographer, even if you're just going like Sumtac or the Airbnb photographer route, photographers are gonna cost you anywhere from 150 all the way up to you know 700 bucks if you get like a really high quality, very skilled photographer. Mm -hmm. I used to spend 150 on my photography and they was, it was great for starting out. But now whenever the photographer that I work with quotes me anywhere from three to $500, I just pay it because pay it. that is the number one reason I get booked and you know, those photos even work for me from a thumbnail mm -hmm. standpoint he's the one that came and shot casa conejo and that video really took off and is what yeah. jump started my youtube career and i owe a lot to just professional photography oh yeah that first photo just could not be more important you just need to be thinking to yourself as i'm scrolling through airbnb i've never heard of this place is that going to make me stop scrolling is the title and is that thumbnail going to make me stop scrolling if the answer is no you need to hire a legit photographer or actually pay you know a decent amount like don't skimp out pay a legit photographer pay the photographer he or she will do a great job for you we promise all right cool oh we're on oh god sorry oh, um, hello. tip number three is really going to revolve around social media marketing now before mike tells us his fire bombs about why Instagram and Facebook are important. I really want to reiterate how important your short-term rental listing is. So make sure that your Airbnb copy is great. Make sure that your photography is great. Your headline is great. Put everything you have into making your listing sparkling before you really go down the road of diluting your time into marketing on, on social media platforms. No, so you'll say, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more, Rob. <laughs> No, definitely. I couldn't agree more. I mean, social media shouldn't be your primary marketing focus. It should still be your Airbnb listing and optimizing that. But if you have a few, you know, extra hours or some resources on your hand, I do suggest still getting on Instagram and Facebook. Again, I track everything very closely and we've been able to generate thousands and tens of thousands of extra hits to the Airbnb listings directly from social media. The two I suggest are Facebook and Instagram. They're both owned by the same person, Mr. Mark the Zuckerberg. Z the Zucks. The Zucks. Yeah. Uh -huh. He owns both of them. So they actually kind of talk to each other a little bit. It makes your life easier. But I do suggest getting on both of those. Instagram's a bit of a younger demographic. It's also kind of easier to grow there organically. Facebook's definitely an older demographic, that's for sure. Uh, but actually might be better fitted to most of your guest profiles because they got more money to actually stay at your property versus Instagram stuff a younger. So that is kind of what I suggest. I know there might be some moaning and groaning though. I don't have the time for this, Mike. It's yes, me. That, yeah. That's this yeah. guy right uh -huh. here. Mr. 14,000 Instagram <laughs> followers. And um, Counting. <laughs> I've got literally dozens. Kind of two tips in terms of time saving for social media to still make it worth your while. Again, owned by the same company, so there's actually a cool feature called cross posting on both Instagram and Facebook. You basically just check off one little box and every single post you post on Facebook, it immediately goes to Instagram as well and vice versa. So you basically, you're not having to do posts at the same time on both platforms. 
is goes out at the same time. To take it even a step further, and then my clients don't have to worry about any of this stuff for months on end, is there's a bunch of also social media scheduling platforms. There's Hootsuite, there's Later, there's Social Sprout, there's a bunch of them out there. What you can do is basically prep all of your posts. I suggest about a month in advance, and you post every couple of days, you schedule it, and then you don't have to think about it for the rest of the month, and all of your posts will go automatically. So you're still bringing in the extra audience, those extra people, and you can just sit back and just let all those bookings come in. And just to wrap this one up really quickly, I feel like this really goes hand in hand with our photography tip, which is if you're trying to grow an Instagram following, for example, mm -hmm. allow content creators to stay at your place and tag your Instagram accounts so that you can grow your overall Instagram following. And the bigger your Instagram following gets, the more likely you are to get more bookings from social media. Tip number four, always have extra bug repellent so you're not eating alive by gnats. But branding and creating a brand for your Airbnb and for your short-term rental listing. For my tiny house, I call it Casita Conejo. The area that it's in is in Conejo, which is Spanish for rabbit. So it's an entire little rabbit home, rabbit themed home, rabbit art rabbit wallpaper and everything in between, but, but it's something that I think is pretty memorable and something that people latch on to. So obviously I've been a really big proponent of branding all the way from Casa Conejo to Casa Mariposa. No, absolutely. I see this especially as well with like tiny home villages, you know, places with like multiple units where they'll be super boring. They'll be just, you know, tiny home one, tiny home two through 10. And like, it's just a huge missed opportunity in my opinion. I've seen some really creative ones as well. So come up with a creative name for the overall concept, the overall property, you have multiple units, and then kind of more interesting creative ones for each individual unit. Kind of the other side of branding as well, I'll briefly mention is what I'll call, I'll just term uh, in-unit branding. You know, basically branding inside of the home or as soon as you get inside of your property that you're renting as an Airbnb guest. So some examples of that I see a lot is they'll have signs with their social media handle. So they'll say, hey, you know, tag Casita Canejo on Instagram, you know, tag uh, Rob Built on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. So that people will actually then share content, share stories, and then you can repost that you can yeah. use that content i should definitely do that that's a great Free idea. marketing yeah, right there, there. You go. another really fun thing that i see as well throughout some of the best airbnbs i visited is they have really cool branded shot skis just fun little gadgets or toys things you can bring home that are branded as well with the name of the unit or the overall property there's some examples of that i've seen everything from beer koozies so if you're having a beer at the place you're on the lake you're at the fire pit they'll have the name of that property of the airbnb is on that you can take that home with you you'll see this little postcards as well that's another common one I've seen. Just cheap little things you can buy that you know are not gonna break the bank for you, but that will leave a more memorable experience for your guests. So whenever I stayed out at a yurt in Idlewild, the owners of that Airbnb actually had like a health and organics and soaps and you know, uh, smells. What, what are this, uh, the incense and yeah, all that kind yeah. of stuff. They had really kind of natural, oh, uh, I know what it is. Aromatherapy products. Hey, yes, yes, I did it. All right, but it was really great. It made the place smell good. And I think it was a really great way for people to take home something to remember that Airbnb by. Absolutely. People, let me tell you about my best friend. He's a warm hearted person who loved me till the end. Okay, tip number five which isn't really a tip, but if you're interested in becoming an Airbnb host, if you've never actually done that before, feel free to sign up with my ambassador link. You'll get a $60 bonus whenever you host your first night. I'll get a little bonus and I'll be assigned as your Airbnb ambassador, meaning I can provide you direct feedback on your listing. So if you're interested in signing up to be an Airbnb host, hit that link down below. Yeah. Smash that smash link. Smash yeah. that like smash button. Smash it. Subscribe. Oh yeah, I guess while you're here, Comment. just smash all the buttons. <laughs> All right, now that you've signed up to be a host on Airbnb, now for the real tip number five, and that's consider creating a website for your Airbnb listing. Now, this is something that I usually steer people away when they're first starting out because a lot of people want to go straight and create their own, what's called an OTA, a booking platform. But when you're first starting out, I think you really need to learn the ropes under the protections that something like an Airbnb will give you, which is mm -hmm. a $1 million host protection guarantee. They've got a whole trust and safety team that can help you in the case of, you know, your house burning down, people burglarizing your house, guests not wanting to leave. So there are a lot of different protections that you get under a booking platform that, where I wouldn't necessarily recommend straying off from those booking platforms at the very beginning of your hosting journey. 
Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Like I wouldn't really go down the Webster route until you have either multiple properties or you're more experienced on the Airbnb hosting side of things. But it definitely does have its benefits. Again, basically just me as a marketer, just the more channels, the more places people can find you online, the better. Even if you just do some basic SEO, it's just another place that they can find you. Also direct bookings as well, again, later down the row, but Airbnb definitely charges a hefty charge for both guests and for the host themselves. But you can really see advertised to your guests like, hey, come over to my website. You can save anywhere from, what, 10 to 15% typically? Yeah, yeah, if you're a host, they take 3%. If you're yeah. a guest, they take anywhere from 12 to 15%. So it can be pretty substantial. I mean, either as the host, you can just take in that extra money or you could advertise on your website and your social media. Hey, come on over to my website. You can save a pretty decent amount of money if you book directly. So that's one option. And to be honest, I know website development might seem pretty daunting, but honestly, just getting a simple Squarespace site up. Well, actually, just, since we're here, Mm. This this video is this brought video to you is sponsored by, by, Squarespace. by Squarespace. Squarespace is the one all <laughs> Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to make website design super intuitive and easy. <laughs> you get sued for this. <laughs> Use our promo code something down below. Call me Squarespace. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not actually sponsored. He's broke. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all to say, start small, work your way up to your own custom website. As Mike mentioned, it does help with your SEO which let's just say it stands for search engine optimization, which is how searchable you are in the Google search box. Yeah, no, again, just basically the more channels, the more places online, again, you can be found, the better in my opinion. So. Mm -hmm. Speaking of being found, Mike, I guess this is probably the end of the YouTube the YouTube video, not the YouTube channel. Surprise, <laughs> the Rob Bill channel the is one. over. This is the end of the YouTube video. Where can people find you? Well, I mean, I'm assuming on the first link down below. I mean, yes, I, absolutely. I, that better be. Well, we'll so, link I mean, you out like uh, over there somewhere. Okay. No, but uh, I do have my YouTube channel. It's at Mike Will Travel. Again, I do Airbnb tours of unique spaces all over the country, all over the world. And also just on Instagram as well. All my handles, everything is just at Mike Will Travel. So um, yeah, check yeah. me out. I guess if we're shilling, things feel free to follow me on instagram but follow mike first all right so thanks for coming on to the channel um pleasure, i hope you man. found something useful here again if you want to become an airbnb host i think it's a really great way to make income for yourself and it's something that changed my life in a way that i never really imagined i'm here because i started a short-term rental journey mike hopefully maybe one of these days we'll partner up on Absolutely. something but uh i guess that'll be it so thanks for watching and i guess we'll catch you on the next episode of rob built if you want to Cover the mic for me. Oh, Cover the, the yeah. Do Go this? Ahead. Yeah. No, that's the mic. The, the lens. Oh. Yeah, Mike here trying my world famous salsa. We call it Abba Salsa. Mm. What are your What are your thoughts right off the bat? Yeah, you should bottle this. Sell on Whole Foods. Well, I would, except there's a lot of cat urine in it, so they don't really accept that. Oh no, that's list. lovely. Okay.